Hope family. Thank you for joining me on my second fueling of your faith. Now, just before I get to the scriptures, can I just uh, remind you that there is a survey that we would love you to, fulf to fulfill, to give us all your details as we're looking to gather again in uh, smaller groups. We can't do the big Sundays because of social distancing. But we do want to gather to worship together in small groups. So it would be great for you to fill in that survey so we can plan effectively the hope communities that we will uh, believe will give you um, the opportunity to worship together. We're having to make the best of what is a very difficult and challenging situation. This is not what we would love to do, but we can make the most of the situation that we're in. So please fulfill um, the survey that would be wonderful. Now uh, I mentioned this in the very first uh, prayer meeting that we uh, had coming together that I was drawn to um, Isaiah 6. So I'm just going to read you the first eight verses of Isaiah um, 6 and just bring some thoughts out to fuel your faith and your expectation at this time. I'm sure it's a passage that you know only too well. And then on Thursday, I'm going to use it to um, really fuel our prayer time on Thursday as we come to pause and pray on Thursday together. So this is Isaiah 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne. The train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each had six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth, and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. It's just a remarkable story, isn't it, of this extraordinary encounter. Yet the context is that it's in the midst of a national tragedy. They've lost a beloved king, a king who started his reign so well, it seemed to be so obedient to God, and then pride came in. He then fell under the disease of leprosy and died. This is a situation of sickness and of death. There's deep mourning. There's fear being released. If this could happen to their good king, it could happen to anyone. And uh, <clears throat> also there were questions. Where is God in the midst of this tragedy and this sorrow and sadness? You can see there's a lot of similarities to our own uh, COVID-19 situation. But I just wanted to fuel your faith by reminding you what came out of this time of tragedy and uh, difficulty in the nation amongst God's people. And the first thing is that we know is this was one of the greatest encounters that man has with the presence of God. So we should have this expectation in the midst of these difficulties that we can have a fresh encounter with the living Lord Jesus. We should come with that expectation. This is just the time where I can have such an encounter with God. I've just got to write it down and it will shape the rest of my life. This is certainly what happened to Isaiah. Secondly, it's a glorious reminder, this vision is, of the God who is high and lifted up and seated in all authority. He's 
always above and beyond our circumstances. He is in control. And he, as he's promised, will work all things for good. So his promises are yes and amen. And he has the authority to carry them out. So in the midst of this difficulty, we need to believe that. That can fuel our faith. Thirdly, his glory has not left his church. His train still fills the temple. He is still building his church, even though we are scattered, even though we might not have seen each other for a very long time. He is building the church. And these circumstances cannot stop his church growing and his glory filling his church. That should fuel our faith. Fourthly, there is a release at this time of an extraordinary prophetic gift to Isaiah. Isn't that wonderful? He receives this prophetic anointing and prophetic commissioning. I want us to believe at this time we can uh, receive a greater level of gifting than we've got already in the gifts that he's already given us. But why not pray for new gifts? Believe God for new gifts, extraordinary gifts that can have a huge impact on others. Also, this story in this time of tragedy speaks to um, Grace Coles. He touches, the uh, seraphim touches Isaiah with a coal that could burn him and yet it cleanses him. And I, I think God wants you to know that whatever sins you feel convicted of, whatever uh, darkness you feel is gripping your life, whatever in the past uh, you know, you've done wrong and don't feel uh, cleansed or set free or forgiven, then there's this glorious experience at times like this for you to experience his grace. It's also a time of extraordinary commissioning to mission and obedience. Who will I send, God says, and Isaiah says, send me. So in the midst of this difficult time, just ask God, what is it that you're commissioning to me, me to do now afresh? What is it that you've got for my life? And, and say yes and amen to it. And then finally, of all the places that people turn to for comfort and support, probably it's the Psalms and Isaiah that people turn to most. And um, I just want you to know, at this time where you may need such comfort and such help, then God wants you to, re to remind you in this time of uh, great um, hardship and difficulty that he is available, so available for you to be comforted and strengthened. Ask him to strengthen and comfort you in your inner pain and he will release healing and wholeness. May that fuel your faith this day.